All done moving? Lock and load, troopers. We're headed to the shooting phase. In the shooting phase, any eligible unit may be selected to shoot, but each unit may only shoot once per phase. What makes a unit eligible? Any unit that has not advanced or fallen back is eligible to shoot unless it is within engagement range of the enemy. When a unit is selected to shoot, the first order of business is to choose their targets. If a model is equipped with multiple ranged weapons, it can attack with all of them. For each weapon, pick an eligible enemy unit to be the target of that weapon's attacks. An enemy unit is eligible if at least one model is within the range characteristic of the weapon and is also visible to the firing model. If that enemy is within engagement range of a friendly unit, however, it is not an eligible target. A unit can split its shots, firing each weapon at a different enemy target, but each individual weapon can only target one enemy unit. Now, it's time to make your attacks. As you resolve each weapon and the enemy removes their casualties from the battlefield, it's possible that some weapons can no longer see their target. Don't worry, once a target unit has declared its attacks, it can finish resolving them before selecting a new unit to shoot. The largest models in Warhammer are relentless weapon beasts and battle tanks, who follow their own set of rules in the shooting phase. All of the previous rules still apply, but monsters and vehicles have an additional rule called Big Guns Never Tire. Monsters and vehicles are allowed to shoot the ranged weapons even when in engagement range of enemy models. When doing so, they can even target the enemy unit that they're engaged with, regardless of what other friendly models are engaged with their target. But they're not entirely unaffected. When a monster or vehicle within engagement range is chosen to shoot, it subtracts one from all its hit rolls. These larger models also present a larger target. When your shooting units are choosing eligible targets, they can target a monster or vehicle, even if it's within engagement range of a friendly unit. Just like those large units, however, you'll also suffer a minus one to hit penalty when targeting a vehicle or monster that's stuck into close combat. I've explained how to choose your units to shoot, but it's time to explain what happens when you actually target the enemy. So let's go over what happens when making an attack. To make an attack, you'll need to reference the profile of the weapon making the attack and of the unit being targeted. This attack sequence is actually identical for both combat and shooting, so when we get to the fight phase, you'll want to remember what I'm about to explain. Each weapon will tell you how many attacks it makes. If a bolt gun has an attack's characteristic of two, you'll make two attacks with it. There are five steps to making attacks. An attack will make a hit roll, wound roll, be allocated to a model, and then a saving throw will be made. If a saving roll has failed, you'll complete the attack sequence by allocating damage. Let's break these down one at a time, starting with the hit roll. Each weapon will have either a ballistic skill or a weapon skill characteristic that tells you what you need to roll on a dice to successfully hit. An unmodified hit roll of a six is called a critical hit and always hits. Inversely, an unmodified hit roll of a one always fails. If a weapon has a ballistic skill of three plus, any roll of a three or higher after applying all modifiers is a successful hit. If you fail the hit, the attack sequence ends for that attack. But if you do hit, move on to the wound roll. Here, you'll compare the strength of the weapon to the toughness of the target and consult the wound roll table. Luckily, this is easy to memorize. If the strength of the weapon is at least double the toughness of the target, you will need a two plus to wound. If the weapon is higher strength than its target's toughness, but not quite double, you'll need a three plus. Now, let's say the strength and toughness are equal you'll need a four or higher to successfully wound. If the toughness of the target model is higher than the strength without being double, you'll need a five plus to wound. Finally, if the toughness of the target is double or more the strength of the weapon, you'll need a six plus to wound. Like the hit roll, a wound roll of a one always fails, while an unmodified six always succeeds and is called a critical wound. A wound roll can also be modified, but just like the hit roll, the net modifier to a wound roll can never be more than plus or minus one. Once these attacks have wounded, the player who owns the target unit must allocate each wound one at a time to their models. If a model has already lost a wound or has had a save allocated to it this phase, it must be the first model to have saves allocated to it. Now, check the save characteristic of the model and make a saving throw. That characteristic will tell you what value a save is passed on. A saving roll is modified by the armor penetration characteristic of that attack. 
Armor penetration is commonly referred to as AP. If an attack has an AP characteristic of minus 2, then you'll subtract 2 from any saving rolls caused by its attack. A saving roll of a 1 always fails, but a 6 doesn't automatically pass. Sorry soldier, your lucky t-shirt just won't save you from an arcane laser beam. A saving throw can never be improved by more than plus 1, but unlike a hit, negative modifiers do stack. If an attack has sufficiently high AP, there may not be a result on a d6 that passes. At that point, you don't even have to roll the dice. Some saves, however, are immune to modifiers. An invulnerable save is a save that can never be modified by incoming AP. These are quite rare and will be noted on a model's datasheet if they're lucky enough to have one. A model can only take one save from an attack, so if you have both an armor save and invulnerable save, you'll have to choose which one you wish to take against each attack. Now, let's look at a failed save. It's time for the final stage of the attack sequence, allocating damage. When a save is failed, a model will take damage equal to the damage characteristic of that weapon. For each point of damage suffered, the model loses one wound. So, if you fail a save to a two damage weapon, the model that failed the save will lose two wounds. Once a model is reduced to zero wounds, it has been slain. Remove it from the battlefield. If the damage characteristic of an attack exceeds the wounds of the targeted model, that extra damage is lost. Still, overkill feels good. Once a model is slain, if there are more wounds to allocate, you'll have to pick a new model to start taking the saving throws. Keep repeating this attack sequence until the attacking unit has resolved all of its attacks or the targeted unit has been destroyed. Then, it's time to select a new unit to shoot. There's a special kind of damage that cuts through armor like it was made of butter. These can bring down the mightiest heroes or rampaging monsters with equal ease. Introducing the Mortal Wound. A Mortal Wound ignores all saving throws, even invulnerable saves. If a unit suffers three Mortal Wounds, they're just losing three wounds. This damage isn't lost as models die. Allocate each Mortal Wound to the target unit one at a time even if the first model is removed as a casualty. Sometimes, these mortal wounds are inflicted as part of a weapon attack. If so, finish resolving all normal attacks on the target unit before inflicting mortal wounds. These will be the last damage allocated to that unit. When following the attack sequence, each attack is rolled one at a time, but oftentimes, the game can be sped up by rolling attacks in a group of dice using a rule called Fast Dice. In order to group these attacks together, they must all require the same hit roll, have the same strength, AP, and damage, as well as be affected by the same abilities and targeting the same enemy unit. If you're firing 10 bolters at the same time, just roll all the dice together. It'll make your games faster and more fun. What do you think about 10th edition? Did you enjoy this video? Make sure to give us a like and let us know in the comments down below. And check out the link in the video description to find The War Room, where you can join our awesome community and find more amazing content for all levels of play.